Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a proportion or ratio, whatever you want to call this. We have three ratios here that are equal, and we're supposed to find the value of C plus 2D. Notice that we have four variables, but kind of like three expressions. So we can find the value of C plus 2D, but we can't find individual values for C and D. All right, so I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. My first method is kind of brute forcey. obviously. It's going to be, uh, well, not necessarily uh, more complicated, but it's a, kind of like a general method. And the second method is sort of interesting. We're going to talk about a really cool shortcut for ratios and proportions. So here's my first method. I'm going to, since these are equal to each other, and this is commonly used with ratios and proportions, if like three ratios are equal like this, I can set them equal to a constant right so suppose because these are uh, this is always true for different values of a b c d so that needs to be satisfied so that the ratio is always a constant so let's go ahead and set it equal to k from here we're going to get three equations i guess that's what i meant by three equations so let's go ahead and cross multiply each one we get a plus b plus c equals 5k and then b plus c plus D equals 2K, and A plus C plus D equals 3K. So one of the things that you can definitely think about is adding these all up. For example, if I add them up, I'm going to get the A twice, the B twice, but the C three times, and D twice. Is that going to help me? I don't know. You could try it. But I'm going to use a slightly different approach for this one. Now, since... I need to find C and D, A and B are not that important, but I can kind of give up on one of them. So suppose A is a constant, and that's just an assumption. You know, we're just going to treat it as a constant, even though it's not, right, obviously. So we're going to rewrite our equations so that it can be solvable. Like we want a system of uh, three equations and three variables, sort of, right? K is a constant, we want A to be a constant too. In other words, B, C, and D, we're going to be solving for those values. Make sense? Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, rearrange these equations based on that. So I'm going to uh, subtract A from here. And the second equation is good as is because I don't have any A's. That's kind of nice. And the third one has an A, so I'm going to isolate C plus D and write it as 3K minus a awesome now here's what i'd like to do i'm kind of looking at the first two equations and from there by using those two equations i can find d by way of subtraction right so let's go ahead and subtract b plus c plus d minus b plus c obviously and that's going to give us d but b b plus c plus d is 2k and b plus c is 5k minus a so from here we get D equals A, because that's going to be a positive, minus 3K. Awesome. So we got the value of D. And now I can go ahead and plug in whatever I got for D and find C. What is C? C is 3K minus A minus D. And that's going to be 3K minus A minus D, which is A minus 3K. And from here we're going to get... Uh, 3k plus 3k is going to be 6k minus 2a. So that's going to be the value of c. And now I got the value of d. And I want to find what? c plus 2d. 2d or not 2d. Okay, that didn't work. Anyways, c plus 2d is going to be equal to then c plus 2 times d, which is a minus 3k. And then it's going to equal 6k minus 2a plus 2a minus 6k, and wow, that's amazing, right? Pretend to be surprised, and you get a zero from here. But there is an easier way to do this. Think about it. Once I got the value of d from here, I'm looking for c plus 2d, so I can use c plus d and d, add these up. That's going to give me c plus 2d, and that'll be 3k minus a plus a minus 3k. Notice that those are opposites. Everything is going to cancel out, and you're going to get zero in a slightly different way. All right, 
So that was my first method. And I'm going to present now the second method. And the second method, I didn't know what it was called before because we, we did a proportion problem. Hopefully I'm going to link that down below here. Uh, we, did, we did it a while ago and I've been reminded by many people that there's a special name for it, the property that I'll be using. But let me go ahead and write it down first and then I'll tell you what it's called. It has a very interesting name. So suppose x over y equals z over w and let that equal k. Then we have this nice property like I want to add x and z. Well, you, can, you can't add fractions like that, but you can add ratios. I'm going to add x plus z and I'm going to add y plus w. The ratio does not change. And this is called componendo dividendo. I hope I didn't mispronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the name of the method. And I kind of find it interesting. So how do we apply it to our situation? Let's go ahead and see how we can use it to our advantage because this is a really, really cool shortcut and you'll be amazed how many times we use it and how much time we save. So let's rewrite our ratios. A plus B plus C over five equals B plus C plus D over two, and that equals A plus C plus D over three. Again, I'm gonna set the whole thing equal to K. It doesn't matter which variable you use. I mean, constant, sorry, correction. Now, from here, I noticed the following. One of the ratios or fractions has a uh, five in the denominator. The, other, the others have two and three. So that would make sense if I add these two together by using the method componendo dividendo. Okay, so in other words, K equals B plus C plus D plus A plus C plus D divided by two plus three. That gives us the following. K equals, notice that I get an A, and then I get a B, and then I get 2C plus 2D divided by 5. But notice that K is also equal to this, which is A plus B plus C over 5. Let's go ahead and set that equal to K, A plus B plus C over 5. This is cool because we, the denominators are the same, therefore I can just compare the numerators. This implies A plus B plus 2c, or not 2c, do you see what I see? Plus 2d equals a plus b plus c. And from here we can basically simplify this, right? We can kind of cancel out some of the terms, for example, a plus b right away. And notice that I have a 2c here and a c here. So if you subtract c from both sides, nothing is left on the right hand side, therefore you end up with c plus 2d equals zero. What was I looking for? c plus 2d? Are you serious? We got the answer, yes. This is the end of the second method. And this brings us, again, this method is called componendo dividendo. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.